We've talked a lot about the things that will get you to fluency, but now let's talk about the things that will keep you from fluency. Let's get to it. What's up, guys? Welcome to Why Friends English, and today we're going to talk about five habits that will keep you from English fluency. Ooh, a different perspective. We've done a lot with trying to figure out what are some effective ways or study habits to get to fluency, but there are some things that our students do that sets them back. It holds them back from actually being able to push through to fluency. It's not that these are bad things. Some of them are obviously bad things, but some of them are actually, we're kind of taught to do it. We're taught to do some of these. So let's just roll right into it. Number one is no goals. This is just kind of being casual and loosey-goosey about the way you study. This is where, where some people would say we just naturally acquire language just by kind of sitting in the pool of language and we just kind of absorb it all. That's the idea is that I don't have to have a goal because sooner or later I will be fluent. Right. But we knew a lot of people that have lived abroad around us that they lived for over 10 years in the culture without actually even reaching in an intermediate level. But some of you guys are already at the intermediate level. So some of you are like, well, I just need to be around native speakers. But even if you're working in English and you're living with people in your home that also speak English as a first language, the odds of you actually becoming fluent is actually surprisingly small. As people, we are really, really good at getting around having to do the hard work. The result of that is that you just don't actually become fluent. Maybe you're able to get around, maybe you're able to live fairly comfortably, maybe you're able to just live the way that you want to. But if your goal is fluency, if you envision yourself as needing fluency or wanting to be able to speak and engage with foreigners very fluently, then you need to actually do the work and get there. In order to do that, we actually have to create short-term, mid-term, and long-term goals. It's not good just to say, hey, my long-term goal is to get this score on the TOEFL or on the IELTS or something like that, because we have to have goals that lead up to that yeah. big goal. You've got to give yourself little wins along the way. And it's not like I'm going to make a list of things I've already done and cross it off, even though for some people that's really fun. But I just mean that you need to have some kind of stepping stones to get to that larger goal. Yeah. If you guys want a hand in learning how to do that, we have a link to a goal making sheet for you in the description. Downloading that will sign you up for our email newsletter, which will give you further tips for learning English. The second one is inconsistency. So we've talked about being consistent a lot on this channel because that is one of the main ways that we actually become fluent in a language. You might have heard this from other English teachers, but language learning is like working a muscle. And as you grow in your ability and your strength in the language, you're basically working like a language muscle, if you will. But the more that you do it, the more that you show up consistently, the better. It is not about how much you do. Hmm. It is not about how many hours a day that you spend it. Yes, that helps a lot in the beginning. But if you are an advanced speaker, this is more about just showing up consistently and actually working through it. At the advanced level, it doesn't have to be long, but it does need to be deep. So that means making more connection than you normally would. It's not like passively listening to people on the bus, but it's also taking and thinking critically about it. Like, what about that is effective? How does what they say connect with and elicit that response from the person next to them? It's important to think critically and make connections with the culture in order to be able to really understand what's going on. At the intermediate level, showing up consistently is also extremely important, but maybe you're not quite at the very deep level yet. Let's pretend you have four hours available every Saturday and that's it. That's all you have. That's the all the time that you can allocate to language learning. What we would suggest is actually taking some of that time on Saturday to do the normal everyday chores that you would do throughout the week, Head. like cooking ahead or cleaning the house or going to get groceries, whatever it is, so that throughout the week, you can spend 15 or 30 minutes a day on language learning. 15 to 30 minutes every day is going to be far more effective than four hours on Saturday. Yeah, and we can't stress that enough. I know that's a really hard concept to wrap your mind around, especially if you're coming out of school and you're just used to 
cramming for an exam or cramming for this homework assignment or punching out a paper in one sitting, it seems like we are taught that putting a bunch of time in once a week is actually effective. But for language learning, it's not that effective. You need to be showing up consistently. It's good for your short-term memory. It builds long-term habits. It is extremely important to show up as consistently as possible. Ideally, not just one large chunk of time every week. Number three is using too many resources. Oh man, marketing has really shaped us here. Resources are great. They are really, really good. Simplifying our study session because we don't have to think, we don't have to wrestle, we don't have to search, we don't have to find. It's just all about, hey, here's a book. I have a book now. Let me go through the book. And it simplifies kind of like our mind space, if you will. But there is a point where you can be using so many resources that you're not actually going in depth with any of them. Just think about it. What is more effective, becoming an expert in one area or in one app or on one textbook or how, doing a little bit of stuff in a bunch of things? It's probably going to be just mastering this one thing. Though that can't always be true, that's not always true across the board, it is important to realize that a lot of these language apps, they are actually doing the same thing, just a different style. A lot of these textbooks there are thousands and probably even millions, and a lot of them are talking about the same thing. Now, you could shop around and try to find an approach that clicks with you or something that you really like. Maybe there's a certain personality of YouTube channel that you like. But the point is, is like, you would be far more effective having one vocabulary app, one textbook for grammar, maybe up to five to 10 channels. I went and watched a lot more than that for English language learning that you show up consistently and learn a lot of the videos there. But then a handful of books that you work through, native material that you work through and seek to understand. Don't do a ton of stuff all at the same time. Having time in a bunch of things is just distracting the little time that you have for study. It's just dissipating it into all these different areas. Yes, you need to learn how to read and write and speak and listen but it is far better and more efficient, especially at the advanced level, if you are doing that in an integrated way. Yeah. That means you listen to something and you write down a summary of it, or you're reading something, you answer some questions or ask your own questions and then answer those questions. It's far better to do that as an advanced learner because that's more akin to what you will be doing in real life. You hear something, mm -hmm. then you talk about it, or you see something and you have to write it in class. Something like that is far more crucial to your language learning skills and ability. Our next point is going to be a bit uncomfortable for some of you. It's refusing to invest in your learning. This is basically the idea of putting your money where your mouth is. We have this idiom to explain that when we seriously want to invest in something, when we seriously want to grow in an area, an easy way that we can motivate ourselves to do that is to put money on the table and say, I'm going to learn because of this. Now, yeah. admittedly, there's another element to that where it can't just be money because that won't work super well in you the long term. can't buy a language. <laughs> right. But in our experience, it's money plus accountability, plus that person. Those two combined together as a teacher or a tutor can really progress your language faster than a lot of free resources or even paid resources. A lot of free resources is great. We live in an age where we have so much English language learning at our fingertips. Some of it is amazing. A lot of it is not that great. You need to approach language learning almost in a minimalistic life mindset. You want to really invest in quality material, especially if you are advanced. If you are intermediate, I would say that you can still progress decently well, yeah. but you're going to spend a lot of time vetting resources. And also you don't always know what's best in what order. If you have a tutor, you can fast track that. If you are an advanced speaker though, I would say you need to not waste your time with a bunch of free resources. You can definitely do it. You can still grow, but you are going to be spending so much time trying to figure out what type of English that person is speaking, whether they actually have some kind of authority on the content or whether they're actually promoting their idea of how the logic flows behind the grammar and how it should go, or if they're actually promoting it, how it works in their region, or if they're actually teaching you how it really is generally speaking. Like there's so many things that you have to figure out. You can really get around that very quickly by having a teacher or a tutor or a curriculum, a course, something, something that is already structured. But we run into lots of students that want that, but they don't want to put much money toward that at all, if any. And that's okay. If you don't have the resources, you don't have the resources, and that's fine. But that's one of the things that you have to understand. If you really want to get up to fluency, you're going to have to invest something in it just to save the time. 
because all that time that you're putting into finding resources, you could be putting into studying if you already have those things laid out for you. So that's something to definitely consider if you have to save up for it and it's something you have to save up for. But if you really want to get to fluency much faster, that's key. I would say it's absolutely key. The muscle analogy here, if I'm trying to become more healthy and I don't know where to go, I don't know where to start and I just start running. That's all I know is I just start running. If I do that thinking I'm saving time by not having to look around or shop around, but then I hear suddenly somebody says, actually running's bad for your health. You should be jogging, you should be walking. And then I start opening up this like Pandora's box of all this exercise stuff that I have no idea how to manage. Yes. So what I do in that case is I would hire a personal trainer who's that's their job. I hire them, not like they're gonna help me run, not like they're gonna like support me or push me running, but so that they can vet through all of that material, all of that information, say for you, for your body, for your lifestyle right now, this is what you need to do. Yeah, sometimes it's better to just start at all rather than just sit in one place. In indecision, you have to make a decision and move forward. You're yeah. not gonna get results otherwise. If it's the wrong decision or there was a more efficient way or something like that, you can debate that all you want, but it's just going to drive you to indecision and not really getting started in a meaningful way or in a consistent way. Yeah. So this is one of those things. We've been where you are. We know it's really difficult to bet, but we have found, generally speaking, that it is very important and crucial to be able to invest in your learning. And yeah, put your money where your mouth is. The last one for you guys today is biting off more than you can chew. This is where you're doing too much at once. And this kind of ties back into stuff that we said earlier, but this could be too many apps, too many programs, too many things. Maybe you're investing three, four, six hours into English every day. That is good, but it's not a pace that you can maintain without burning out very easily. And burning out usually causes people to fall out of the language learning game for months. So that's something that you want to avoid. You want to avoid burnout because it will take you backwards rather than forward. It is very easy to set up this amazing, glorious plan and the structure. Maybe you have this whole curriculum, you have lists of things to do in each hour of your study session. That's great if you have the time, but more importantly, you just need to be able to do English. Yeah, you need an outlet, right? You need a thing that you can do in English. So not just a bunch of learning, not just a bunch of intake, because the pace that you set for yourself can change. Our, our lives ebb and flow. So sometimes we're more busy, sometimes we're less busy. So if we mm. make this master plan and you have no flexibility, no, no room. wiggle room mm -hmm. for it, no margin at all, then the moment one thing comes up, your whole schedule is going to fall apart. And that can be really frustrating because you have this plan set in stone it's and you possible plan <laughs> and you want to get it done. But as a result, you fall out, you burn out because you can't make those goals. You can't keep up with that pace. Yeah. And even if you don't burn out, getting your mind to where you can rest in English, where you can watch your favorite TV shows or you can read a book that you enjoy, like a book series or a topic that you enjoy. Maybe you're looking around at blogs or something on the internet, watching YouTube videos. Being able to rest in English is important. So take your interests, the things that you like, and do it in English. It would be very beneficial for you to do that. And if something stands out to you during that time, like, why did they say that? What does that idiom mean? then it's good to write that down. But ideally you won't be hardcore studying that whole time yeah. because it's not really a sustainable practice. Think about running, right? The fastest way to get from point A to point B without a car or horse or anything like that is to run. And if it's a long distance, our children sometimes, their thought is go really fast and then walk. Go really fast and then walk. Go really fast and then walk. But that is definitely not the fastest way to do that because they end up walking or stopping longer than they're running. And so the process of them getting to the end goal, whether it's down the driveway or wherever, they end up taking more time as yeah. if they would just jog. <laughs> Our daughter is actually pretty good at this already. She and her brother will run and he will sprint and stop. And she will just keep going just keep going she's just keep going down the driveway and she will beat him just because she's keeping pace yeah so definitely remember to keep pace toward fluency well, that's it for today guys 
Thank you so much for watching through these. If you want more resources, like I said, we have attached a goal sheet down below for you to fill out and just figure out what your stepping stones are, your long, mid-range, and short-term goals. And as always, we're really glad you're around on this channel. We're really glad that you can find some value in these videos. So like we always say, we will catch you on the next one.